friends, good morning. We had a day yesterday. We had an MRI. It went well. Uh, I haven't been able to cut, split, nothing for a while. This is a quick disclaimer on this video. That's all this is. It's not what we're used to, but I'm just interjecting in the beginning of this video to let you know that I do talk about my relationship with drugs and alcohol and about my past. Stuff that you do not know about me, you do now about my journey as a young man becoming a man and and my struggles with drugs and alcohol. This is this is like a slight view into what I went through. This isn't a war story. This is a story of victory. But I do talk about stuff that we're not used to talking to on, about on this channel. So it's just a quick disclaimer. It's raw. It's honest. It just hit me in the bunker the other day. I was fixing up my axe and I was sitting there and I was a little bit in a mood because I couldn't really test it. I couldn't do much physically. So I hope you enjoy this video. I hope it can help somebody. When I opened up this YouTube channel, I vowed to myself, if I'm not helping, if I'm just taking up space, I'm, I'm, not, I'm gone. I'm not going to be here. So enjoy this video. Share it with somebody that you know that might be struggling. So this is part of my life. Over and out, friends. Enjoy. <sighs> See, see, the, the, this is why, friends, this is why. I've been on this axe for hours. Okay, I just have. I've been on it for hours. Um, I'm, I, I'm not going to go in the axe production business. Like, I mean, slam, boom, bang. All I do is make axes in here or wherever. I mean, let's be honest. I'm probably going to have the option to do what I want. I always have done what I want, and you should do the same. Why shouldn't you? Why shouldn't you? You should. We were meant, we were put here. It's our life. I made a decision years ago, friends, that I am not going to work my, my body. I've been smashed to pieces. I can't tell you how many times in the industry. I love the, the business, but I'm a bit, if I was to be very honest and truthful about it, I was not broken properly. I was a, I was a, a a self-taught faller, to be honest with you, in the beginning. And I, 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 I'm, a, I'm a bit of a chance taker. I am. And I know this about myself. I do stuff that others won't. I don't know why. I've always been that way. I, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, a guy who, who... I had substance abuse issues when I was a young man. I, and uh, I was haywire. Just haywire. I don't talk about it that much because I just don't. I find it a boring story. It's such a common thing today. But you know what's even more common and more acceptable now? Recovery. Recovery from a fatal disease. My pain was self-chosen. Right? Yeah, mad season. Friends, it is. If you've got some kind of... If you think you've got a drinking or a drug problem, it's pretty simple. You do. You, you probably do. I don't talk about this all the time on the channel, but I do from time to time because my heart wants people, especially people who are trapped and afraid and scared to, 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 to bear their soul. Friends, I got no secrets, none. I can literally walk down the street with my freaking head holding up high. I got, I got it all out. I got it all out. I did it years ago, 20 something years ago, 20, 23 years ago or something now. I did. I talked about the stuff that I had done that I wasn't real proud of. I did. I got rid of it. And, and, and uh, the guy that I shared it with was like, well, I don't see that guy sitting in front of me today. And I said, it's not that guy. I did those things though. And I ain't proud of it. And I, I, I'm, I'm very sorry for it. And I would never do it again. I couldn't even imagine thinking about doing it again. It was my other life, you see? So I haven't drunk or done drugs in 23 years, friends. 25, 20, I don't know, somewhere's in there. Somewhere's in there, seriously. So I think that's why, I, I think, I've had this kind of 
not a death wish. That's a, a strong word, but it's not far off. I've always been a risk taker. Like, a, you know, everybody's standing around. They don't want to do it. Oh, I'll go do it. I'm just that guy. I don't know why I was born that way, I think. But anyways, let's that's, that's not talk about that anymore. But I, I do... I do know that there is a way out if you're struggling. There is a way out and you just got to admit it and, and admit it to yourself that, that you, got, you got a problem and you're not a bad dude. You're, you're just not. You're not a bad person. Um, I learned a lot about that stuff when I, when I got, got my head on straight. I did. I learned a lot about it. And, and uh, you know, a lot of that stuff comes from, from father issues, you know, uh, some stuff you're born with. I think I might have been born with it, to be honest with you. That that trait, that phenomenon of craving. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, friends, here's the little deal. Let's talk a little bit more about it. Here's the deal. And if the young folks are watching, listen close. Friends, liquor, for me, liquor was like putting freaking some kind of nitroglycerin inside my veins. I cannot explain it. All I know, seriously now, don't, 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 I don't want to lose you. I'm, I'm being serious, friends. It was like nitroglycerin. I would drink and it would hit me, you know, down she'd go. Oh, oh yeah. How you doing? Pretty good. Nice to see you. How's it going, everybody? I would change drastically. But without the booze and without the drugs, as much as I was a good person and good socially, I was uncomfortable as heck. I was very uncomfortable. I couldn't really walk up and talk to people. I know this may sound strange to you. I know it may. But friends, I couldn't. It, especially in a, in a bar or a... Or a I just... I, I felt very uncomfortable not drinking in a bar. And I tried it because I got in trouble lots from Wendy and I would try and stop drinking. It was like, why would I even go there? It was, it was hard. So, but as soon as, get this one, get this one. As soon as I would think about that, I, I, I what am I not drinking for? I'm at the bar, Wendy's mad at me, I'll just go have one. As soon as, it didn't even hit my freaking palate yet. It didn't even hit it. I just started sauntering over to the bar and as soon as I made the decision, you wanna know how powerful alcohol and drugs are? Look at the people on the street. Look at the street people. They've made a decision to do that instead of love their children and love them. It is powerful. I've been there. It, 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 but but I've, I've got out. Friends, I was going down. I was going down. There's no other way to put it. And friends, I wasn't a bad dude. I was not a bad person. I wasn't. I'm telling you, I was a good person. I had lots of friends. I was socially graced. I could, girl, it did, didn't matter. It was, it was good. I didn't struggle with life. Drugs and alcohol were the only thing I couldn't, I couldn't get a grasp on it. I couldn't do it. It literally turned me into an animal. It was, I, like I was saying earlier, it was like nitroglycerin. Yeah, and, and bad things happened. Bad things happened. So I quit when I was 27 years old because I was going to take myself out. That's, in a nutshell, that's what was happening. I was going to take myself out. So I was going to say something else and then I forgot. I forgot what I was going to say. But... Yeah, the stuff, uh... oh, as soon as, the powerfulness of it, the powerfulness of, of alcohol, okay? You want to know how powerful it was? Get this, this is, I can remember this like it was yesterday. Listen to this. I remember the night I was in, a, I was in trouble because I'd been on a party and, and my wife was going down to the bar. Wendy, was my girlfriend at the time, she was going down to the bar. They were just going to the bar. Well, I was coming to the bar too. But she said, if you drink, you're out of here. Like it was bad. I was getting bad, friends. I went to the bar. I felt so uncomfortable, friends. 
I mean, I just, I, did, I didn't know where to put my hands in my pockets. I didn't know whether to sit, stand. I felt, I can't explain the feeling, just very uncomfortable in my skin. So to me, to me, alcohol was the solution. Do you see what I mean? It was the solution. I drank for the solution. To me, it was a solution. So I just, I just, I just remember that night of saying, forget it, forget it. I can't, I can't be like this. I'm going to have a drink. Friends, I swear, I swear, I swear. I started walking. Okay, remember before that, a few minutes before that, I literally was like a kid in a corner like this. Not, not, couldn't really, hey, hey, you know, no, nothing. I was very uncomfortable. Get this. I said, no, I'm, I'm, forget it. I'm going for a vodka. I started walking to the bar. On my way to the bar. I hadn't even drank yet. On my way to the bar. How's it going? Ah, I did a good set. You heard me, had ya, huh? Yeah, no doubt, buddy. Yeah, hey, how you doing? Right on, good. Hey, buddy. Can I get a, uh, completely different person confident I'm like I hadn't even drank I'd made the decision in my mind that I was gonna have a drink so it was all gonna come back to me and everything was gonna be okay friends I'm telling you this is a freaking strange video for me but I, I want you to understand that I was not long for the world friends Back in my 20s, I, I I wasn't. I don't miss alcohol one bit, not one bit. When I cleaned up, I ended up going to uh, do, to a center. I I, I was gonna I was gonna take myself out, and uh, and and by the grace of God, somebody came to my door that morning. The girl I worked with, she came to my door, knocked on the door, was a knock on the door, I'm like what? Come on, come in, just wretched been on a four-day drinking bender driving drinking drugging partying not sleeping bad news bad news and uh she come in and she looked at me and she went br oh my i'm phoning a treatment center right now i'm phoning jane we knew this we knew these people you know what happened to me i was sitting there with nothing nothing i had nothing I had my pickup truck. I couldn't pay rent. Rent was gone. I was going down. I didn't have nothing. I bought, I had no food in my fridge. I bought a six pack. I scraped up the jinglies around my, to buy freaking beer. That day I phoned my mom and she said something to me. That's my last ditch effort is my mom always. She said, don't phone me when you're drunk. You got a, you got a drinking problem. Go to an AA meeting. <laughs> That's what my mom told me. I swear to God, I swear to God. That's what she said to me. She'll tell you. And then that knock on the door came. I went to the treatment center three days later. I said, I was sitting there and she said, I'm going to phone the treatment center. She said, this, this, this coworker of mine came over and saw me. And she said, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to call, call the treatment center. I said, I looked at her and I said, call him. <laughs> call him. I surrendered right there and then. Right there and then I surrendered. I almost cry thinking about it. I don't know why I did at that moment. Because I think the next move for me was the street. Honestly, I do. I do, I think it was the street. 1997, January 13th. I went in, I sobered up. I went into a treatment center, I think on the 17th of January. I stayed there for 41 days, 40, 40 days or something like that. Friends, in that 44 days or whatever, I learned so much about me and, and alcoholism and drug addiction and, 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 and I, 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 I literally was, I was on fire. And I remember saying, I just want to be the crazy because I was nuts drinking. I was absolutely nuts. Back flips, freaking house of the party, you know, 
life of the party, wild man, wild man, okay? Seriously, friends, bad news, not good. And uh, so um, what was I talking about? Oh, so it comes time for me to leave the center. Friends, I swear to you, if that was a Western door that was going like that, I'd have come out of guns a blazing. It's time to live. I never looked back, not once. Never had a toke, a sip, a drink, a snort, a nothing. Never again. Not one. Nothing. I was done. I was done. And you know why? I look on it now. I'm not religious. I'm not religious. I am not a religious person. I didn't grow up in religion. I don't go to the church. I go to a church for a wedding and a funeral. My mom raised me, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And that God is everything, everywhere. And God is love. That's how I was raised. And karma, what you do will come right back to you. She drained me this way or, or raised me this way. So I was, I think I grew up maybe on the spiritual end of things. So uh, I kicked them doors off that freaking hinge of that thing. And I went, I got my truck and I went back to my landlord and I said, I'm sorry. I went, I went bad on the rent. I'll have your rent money to you. And I'm coming back and living in bucking. No, 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 no. And I made it. I made it. I did it. I didn't look back once. I never used, I nothing. I went to AA for freaking years. I went for years. If somebody was struggling, they'd come to me and say, Buck, would you take me to a meeting? I'd say, right now, which one? Let's go. I've never, ever talked about that on this channel. Never, not once. Is this video even going? Yes, it is. I'm so glad it is. We're running out of, we're running out of freaking... I don't want to lose this moment. I want to plug us in because I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm freaking dead serious about this stuff. I don't talk about it. I don't use it as a crutch. I don't use it as a... Okay, that's good. Good. You know what I mean, friends? I don't, uh, I don't say, how you doing? My name is Buck and Billy Ray, recovered drug addict and alcoholic. That's not, that's not my gig. Uh, I'm not, I don't classify, classify myself as a miracle. A lot of people do that, that clean up. They do. They classify themselves as a miracle. I don't. I'm a, uh, I'm a, a realist. Uh, I'm not a miracle. I'm, I'm the farthest thing from a miracle. Miracles are, are when someone can walk on water. That is a miracle. Right? Am I, am, I, am I right? Yes, I am. Because that is a miracle. I'm a guy who... I don't know why I got salvaged out. I, I, don't, I don't know why. But I've been salvaged out a few times in my life. In the bush a couple times that time there's something up for me friends and I don't know what it is yet I'm 52 coming up this April and I literally don't know where my life's going I don't I don't know where I'm going <laughs> isn't that crazy <laughs> I don't know where I'm going but here's the thing I'm doing what I've always done my entire life this thing uh, friends, I've been on one of these as long as I was allowed to handle one. I've been feeding a wood stove for, well, 45 years. Friends, when I came out of that treatment center, I was a salesman. I had a job selling men's clothing. Yes, indeed I did. It was a high-end menswear clothing store, and I'd worked there for seven years. And my boss had seen me at my absolute worst. But I made him dough when I worked, when I worked, and when I didn't, I didn't show up and I didn't phone. I was awful. I was horrible. I was, I was a, the, the epitome of, a, of an alcoholic and a drug addict. I was a binger. I didn't drink every day. I'd go two weeks, three weeks without drinking. I wasn't that guy. But when I got started on booze, that booze took went in my veins and it took me for three days. Always two, never one. 
always three day benders and I'd get into the drugs. And I was a complete write off. Wendy was with me in those times. We'd been together five years. She watched me go down. She was sad for her and she left me. She finally left me friends. She did, she left me. And it was the biggest gift I'd ever received from that woman was when she left me that day. I came home after a bender and there she was with the moving truck, moving out. And I thought to myself, you wanna know what I thought? I thought, good, she's going. Now I can really party, not have anybody to answer to. Do you know how horribly, terribly, badly I didn't want her to go? That one hurts a bit. Ugh. Ugh. Oh. That one hurts when I talk about that. Excuse me. Drugs and alcohol. It's so sad. It is. It's, it's, it's so sad. Friends. It is. It, it, it's, it's terrible. It, 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 Friends, I'm a good man. I am. I'm, I'm a good person. I wasn't a bad person. I wasn't. I was not a bad person. I didn't, I wasn't mean to people. I, 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 was, I was mean to me. You know what I mean? I was just a good guy that, that just that typical old thing. He's a good guy until you give him the booze. You know what I mean? You want an instant a-hole? Give him booze. And even then I wasn't, like I wasn't bad until I got really bad. And, and, uh, yeah. So she left me. She left me. And, uh, and I went, I, I didn't last long after that, friends. I missed her so bad. I didn't want her to go, but I, I didn't have, I, I was so deluded that I didn't need anybody. I didn't need nothing. I had my booze and my drugs and I didn't need nobody. I was going to the street. I was, I was going to the street. So uh, I'll jump ahead because I, 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 so she left me and then I, I, I went crazy and partied hard and then I ended up down in the basement of my basement suite. Remember when that person came and knocked on the door I was telling you about there? Okay. Yeah. Well, that was after like, like my binging days were, were going into like six days, seven, eight, nine. I went on a 10 or 11 day drinking bender. Just reckless, horrible, horrible. And that's when I came back to my, you know, my, my, my place there and I had no food, nothing. My job was gone. Uh, you know, I, I had nothing, nothing. I had nothing. And I, I was going to go, I was going to go climb a tree. That was how I was going to take myself out. There's a tree we used to climb. I've talked about that, I think once or twice on the channel, but, uh, that's how I was going to do myself in. There was a big fir tree that me and my younger brother used to climb drinking. I mean, this isn't the greatest video for kids, but it's it's my it's part of my story. It's part of my story, and 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 I want you to know. I I, I want you to know that that. Please, please listen to me. Please listen to me. If you think you have a problem, you probably do. It's not that complicated, friends. Put it this way: people who who don't even think about that, like people who don't think they have a problem, they don't ask that question to themselves. They don't, it's not a problem. If you think you got a drinking problem, you probably do. So I fought for it for years, I fought with it, tried to be good, tried to do this, tried to drink on the weekends, tried to drink only beer, tried this, tried that, I tried everything under the sun. I'm a drunk and a drug addict. That's what I am. And God loves drunks and fools. He has mercy on them. He did me. He did me. <laughs> Here I am. You see? So, like I say, I don't care what you think of me. I don't, friends. It would be great if you liked me, but if you don't, I really don't care. Honestly, I don't. Because I like me. I do. I actually like me now. 
But I didn't before I loathed myself, friends. I did. I did not like, I couldn't look in the mirror. I'd look in the mirror like this. I would never look into my eyes. I couldn't do it. I could not do it. I couldn't look into my eyes. I hated myself, actually. Because I knew I shouldn't be doing what I was doing, but I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop. Yeah. So... I don't know where this came from. We were talking about an ax. So I want to finish though with one little story. I went to a treatment center. That woman knocked on the door and I said, phone her. Three days later, I, I, I went and put my truck somewhere. I talked to my landlord. I said, I'm sorry. I'm in a bad way. I'm going to go get my crap together. I'd like to, I'd like to come back here if I can. She says, no problem, young fella. Just, I got honest. I got honest. And I said, I'm, 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 I'm having problems with drugs and alcohol and I want to go get looked after. I want to go find myself. And she was like, you go. I'll have this here when you, you know what I mean? As soon as I got honest, life started to work out. As soon as I got honest and just forget the BS, just, I, 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 I'm wrecked. I, I got, I'm, I'm, something's wrong with me. Help, help. Please help me. Right? Please help me. You know, I, I, I wasn't a religious person, friends. So when you ask me what faith is, faith is when there's nothing left. That's when I reached out. Faith. For, in what? Faith in what? I don't... I knew there was something. I knew there was something. There had to be something. So that's what I grabbed onto. My childhood God. A guy I used to talk to when I was walking down them country roads and riding my pedal bike when I was a young kid. A young athlete, an innocent young kid. I was always talking to myself. Always. Playing little games and talking to somebody there. Someone I was talking to. I don't know who it was. It can be whatever you want it to be. So, I went. Anyways, friends, sorry. My, my wife just called and we lost the, the video there. And I forget where I was, but... Yeah, so I so I spent the time in the center and I booted the hinges off the door and I went out living. You know what I did? Wendy's already with another man. Listen to what I'm saying right now. Listen to me. Listen to me. She was gone. She was gone. She was out of my life. She was she was with another man. She went. Oh gosh. Oh, that hurt. It hurt so bad, but I was so freaking determined that this I was done. I'm 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 going on this journey. I'm going on this. I'm done. I'm done. So I came out and I got a hold of her. I said, you need to come and see me. And she oh, here we go again. How many times did she hear me say, I'm done drinking and drugging. I'm done. I'm, I'm going to fix up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please just let's, let's try again. You know how many times she heard that? So I said, Wendy, you need to come see me. She came see me and, and I told her straight to her face. And you know what? I says, Wendy, are you coming with me? I'm done. And you know what? She'd heard that so many times, but she said to me later, it took her a month to figure it out. She said, no, because I, I said, you can't be drinking and, and, and carrying on. Not, not now. We're going on a spiritual journey, me and you. Let's do it. Let's go. I want you as my woman. I want you as my woman. And uh, she, uh, she, she went away. She said, she said, no, I, no, no, I'm not doing that. And she came back a month later, friends. She did. She came back a month later. And, uh, and she's been clean and sober like me for a long, long, long time. And, uh, I love that woman so much. But I said to her, you can't be drinking and drugging. We got to do this. We got to do it together. And we did. My kids have never seen me drunk. I was a sad, sad case, friends. I mean, I mean, I was sad. I was, I was sad. So I left the treatment center. I got my woman back. I went back and got her back. I quit my job. I went into my boss and I said, I can't work here no more. I went back to my job selling clothes. And I'm like, literally, literally friends. I was like, what in the heck am I doing here? What am I doing here? Went to my boss. I said, boss, and there's more to it. Like I would go and get, I'd go up the mountain with my power saw, my Mo McCulloch, that one right there. And I would go up 
and get firewood and come down and put the firewood in the yard. And then I'd go to my nine, 12 to nine shift selling freaking clothes. But that didn't, that didn't, it didn't work for me. I, I couldn't, it, it was, I was turning into a man. I was creating who I wanted to become. And I couldn't get there because of the booze and the drugs. I couldn't do it. it wouldn't allow me. It was terrible. I wanted to be a stand-up, hard-working son of a you-know-what. That's just what I wanted. I had no dad. I had nobody to... I had no role models. My mom raised me. I was I was just bucking. I wasn't even bucking. I was BR. You can create yourself. You want to do something? You want to be somebody? You do it. You say, I'm going to do that. Not, I'm going to try and do that. You say try, you've just opened the door of failure. There's no failure and I'm doing this. I wanted to be a faller. I almost died doing it. I said to my boss, I'm quitting, I'm going to sell firewood. And he said, don't do that, bucking, don't do it. Billy Ray at the time, don't do it. I said, thanks for the vote, here's my notice. Two weeks later, down I went. Me and Mama Color went. My grab my girl. We went downtown. I bought that power saw, and I started my journey. Friends, this has been a long video. She's coming up the driveway right now with groceries. She phoned me. That's why the video stopped. I got to go help her with the groceries. Um, friends, I love you people so much more than you probably will ever know. I, I, I'm, I am what you see. I am what you see. If you're looking for some kind of shoe to drop or something, it, it ain't going to happen. <laughs> I enjoy to give. I love giving. I do. Um, I need nothing. I need food and shelter. Love is nice. I love you people. My wife's here now. I just seen her pull in. She came back, we made a life. We had a couple of kids and I started my journey as a woodman. Here we are. I'll see you on the next video. Please, if you think you've got a problem with drugs and alcohol, please. It's very simple. You may. Over and out, friends. Be kind.